What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking about tonight's MLB slate. Uh, coming off a pretty good slate myself. Uh, made a little bit in MLB, made a, made a good amount in NBA, almost quadrupled up in NBA, um, which was always nice. And I got all the NBA bets right. So, you know, got some money to play with and we're ready to get back after it again tonight. Sheets, uh, any sort of initial thoughts? How was your night? And uh, let's jump into the slate. Yeah, my initial thoughts is um, is probably the the pitching is going to be the late game. Uh, but we'll we'll actually oh it's not it doesn't play late. I keep forgetting the freaking Angels they play early now. I totally forgot. Yeah. Okay. There's so much for that that lead in. Uh, it looks like every game's at seven o'clock. We have a seven 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 seven. Is there anything? Yeah, they late? do that on, on the Wednesdays. It's nice and uh, oh look at that. that huh? to, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Just say I'm pro- I'm not going to be uh, live tonight. Just uh, okay. So yeah. everybody knows. I, I'm good for live today, so I will be around. All right. So let's uh, let's just let's just get right into it. I guess. Yeah. Let's go game by game. Here we go. Let's start with uh, the Mets in Washington. Um, I'm gonna double check my weather while I'm going. I always want to remind everybody that it's like it's it's always important to check weather, but especially like as we're just hitting the the the, the months where it's hot some places and sort of still cool some places. We really want to make sure to, that you guys are checking on the weather. So. Um, we do have some wind blowing in in this game. Uh, it's only eight miles an hour from from right center. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I like to use ten as my sort of guideline, um, unless it's a huge slate. Then maybe you can you can factor it in more. But yeah, I'm sort of interested in a couple different things in this game. I I, I think the Mets um, I think the Mets are are more viable than they were yesterday when when they were supposed to be chalky. But then people caught on to the fact that the wind blowing in was probably going to have some effect. And I have some interest in the Mets today. Uh, Aaron Sanchez is a guy I used to really like and would never want to pick on uh, back in his day because everybody would see that he would, you know, he wouldn't strike out at people. He'd give up this contact and all this, but it was all on the ground. I uh, don't really think he's much of anything anymore, unfortunately, and sort of sad he gets the injury riddled career. But uh, I, I have the Mets as one of the top plays and I'm open to using a low, a low ish on McGill. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to land on that one. I feel like every time, all this guy does is go out there and pitch well. Like almost every, I mean, he, what, five he was he was cruising in that last start too. Before it just kind of came unraveled a little bit. Yeah, he had the nine strikeouts, and then and then I think he gave up, had a, he had gave up uh, two hits and a walk in that in that fifth inning or something like that, um, sixth inning. Um, but yeah, that was a. Uh, I mean, he's he's a, he's got stuff, man. He's got he's got good stuff. I would say that uh, the one guy who's going to be you know stand out as a, as a play on Washington is going to be Juan Soto. But what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, the, the I, I you know the theme of, of tonight is is actually going to be me trying to make my money back for maybe bad plays I made yesterday, <laughs> and, and and starting with uh, I'm going to go right back to the Mets again today. <laughs> um, uh, that so they're one of the three main stacks that I'm kind of targeting right now, um, and I'm not quite getting to McGill, but I always underproject him, you know, um, so it's very possible that I'm underprojecting him again which means that I probably should throw him in. I don't currently have him as like the like my ninth best pitcher or something like that. Um, but, but, but should probably manually put, move him up a little bit. Cause like, is it all, all like they said, all I get, all the, what's his name? It was catch touchdowns. Like all this guy does is pitch well, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So, and, and, it, and you know, it's not like Washington is, is any great chase, you know? So um, I'll, pr- I'll probably, probably manually upgrade him a little bit, but uh, the Mets are the key for me in this game. Yeah. And um I, I, I think I, I'm with you on the same page. What, what are your, let's, let's move on to the next one. What are your thoughts on this Tampa Bay LA? Yeah, well, this is, I mean, these are the top, well, I don't, I'm not saying necessarily the top two, but uh, certainly Otani looks to be the best play right now. Um, and I don't know how that's going to change. Uh, McClanahan at 10, two, you know, looks at 10, two looks a lot like a lot, but I mean, the guy is just tremendous upside every, every, every game. So I, I feel as though, he rates for me as, as I don't want to say the clear second pitcher, but close enough. I mean, I, I certainly think that McClanahan Otani makes a lot of sense. I presume that a lot of people are going to do that, but yep. but uh, that's, that's my first look at this game. I, I certainly have no interest in either the hitting. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of a smaller slate. Um, so I'm trying to find a way to get interested in the hitting here. Okay. And I just, I guess, I guess the best way to, to, to look at it is you, you have winds blowing out 17 miles an hour to right center field. Okay. We know Otani has a high range of outcomes, even though he's been much better this season. Um, but because he can get wild, I, I could see some, some arguments being made for, for oh. some rays, specifically Brandon Lowe, 
Lau and uh, Wander Franco at low ownership. And then a Rosa Rain, I always like to play because you can also get the stolen base upside. Yep. So I could, I could get behind, you know, maybe a stack, but more, more importantly, maybe just a couple of, of low owned, you know, two man, maybe a secondary stack as a three man with a Rosa Rain, uh, Franco and low or something like that. So, so that, that's my only, you know, to, to get some leverage, I, I would, I think that's a pretty viable way to go. But I, on its face, it does seem like Otani and McClanahan. I mean, I think if you're playing a cash game lineup, these are the guys you're using. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't think there's another way to really try to build without trying to use these two guys. The strikeout upside is just way too high for both of them. Yeah. Um, but, and, and, and as good as, like, I don't know, McClanahan is like, when I watch him pitch, he looks unhittable, and yet he still always ends up giving up a home run or two. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, you can always pick out, you know, there's, there's a guy named Mike Trout is pretty good. And uh, I actually think Rendon or Trout would be a really good one-off play if you're not playing McClanahan because you're getting just too low of ownership for the size of the slate, right? And that's yeah. what you have to sort of try, start to, to weigh is how often, you know, can one of these, one of those five guys I named go deep or two of them. And, and can you win, can you win with, with uh, you know, trying to take some other pitchers? Because that's really more of the question to me. It's not that I don't want to, I'm not, I have no fear of taking these bats. I just don't have other pitchers that I'm totally in love with, but maybe I do the McGill thing with one of these guys and then, uh, and then use some of these guys as one offs or, or as a combo yeah. stack. Uh, sorry, sorry. As a, as, a, as my secondary stack. Um, what about Detroit and Oakland for you? Yeah. Who is this? Who is this dude who's showing up in my projections? Who is Joey Wentz? Joey Wentz, uh, the pitcher, um, that would be the other way to go. So, He's the young guy, right? They, 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 uh, pretty sure he was a, t- a top pick a little bit ago. He's one of their top prospects. I don't know everything there is about him, but I do, um, I do know he's supposed to be talented. So he would be another route. Maybe, you know what, Chief? You could play McGill and him, and you may not even need right. like, some of that Tampa Bay right. LA stuff, although you could. And, and then you could be getting different that way. Cause again, it, it should be treated as a small slate. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I can get behind all of that. Um, I can, and I can, I, I'm totally fine with the idea of Wentz. I'm, I have no problem picking on the A's. Good pitching weather game. Um, don't have any umpire. Oh, I do have umpire data. Neutral umpire, nothing special there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was my mom just bringing me coffee, by the way. Sorry. So, <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, I, I don't have any interest in the bats in this game. If I did, I would want to play the lefties uh, against uh, – I, I, I guess there's not really going to be lefties. So I, I just don't think I'm going to do much hitting wise. Anything for you? No, I think this next game though, is where, um, is where you could do some pivoting if you wanted. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it's not, listen, it's not the easiest game in the world, but I don't know what the wind or the weather's like, but I, but I think Eovaldi and Anderson, both of them are in play for me uh, as something to do. You know, if you don't want to play Otani and or McClanahan, I don't have them rated all that much worse. I mean, they're worse, but not that much worse. Um, right. And if you get the right umpire, you get the right, you know, you get the right mojo. You, know what I mean? like you, get, you get, you get the, you get the baseball gods just claiming there's going to be no runs this game. You know what I mean? I, then uh, hopefully it applies to both pitchers um, and and the hitting environment in general. And you can play both these guys together and get immediately different. So that would be my, uh, that would be my way to go. Um, I'm, I'm not quite getting to the Atlanta or Boston hitting right today, right now, but I could certainly be talked into it. But I think that the, the playing either, either or both of these pitchers is something you could do on a small slate. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, that if all has got a five and a half K prop, there's a, you know, it's six and a half for, uh, for McClanahan and seven and a half for Otani. So it's not all that different. Ian Anderson only has a four and a half K prop. His strikeout rate has been way down this year. Yeah. What is that? I don't know exactly what's going on with him. And it's not like he's pitching in, it's not like he's pitching poorly. You know, his last four starts, one run, two runs, two runs, one run, five, six innings every time. It's not like he's pitching poorly. He just is not striking people out at the clip that uh, we, we got used to him sort of doing last year. So I actually do. I mean, there, there's one quick bet I would I would throw out. I think that Ian Anderson uh, prop bet of four and a half Ks is too low. Um, and 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 I'm I kind of I. I kind of am a little bit interested in maybe doing what I, what didn't quite work out for me last night and maybe playing, maybe playing Atlanta again. Um, I also don't mind Boston. I think the run total is too low on these Boston guys. What is it eight and a half? What is eight and a half? The, the game total is eight. And yeah. um, for Boston, 3.8, it seems a little low. And the ownership is just so low that it's, there's just so many things you can do on this slate. If, if, I mean, if these ownerships are anywhere near true, which it's hard to know. I mean, we had, we had no 
like literally no cardinal early on, on on either of the sites I was looking at were projected to be above 2% owned and they ended up as the chalkiest stack. You know what I mean? On the slate yesterday. Um, So it's who knows, but, but, you know, I, I could, I could be talked into both these offenses and and I, and I agree that they're both, they're both pitching options. I probably would be looking at these more as secondary stacks, except for, I, I, I still feel like you can get a full stack out of Atlanta. The problem is, the way I would do it because of the the value, I would probably try to use Duvall and demerit with Acuna and then take up, it takes up all your outfield spots. That's the only issue I have with it, but, um, but I'm open to it. It's not, not, not the most exciting to me. It's not my favorite place to stack. Uh, but I, I do think that getting some bats and I still want to just keep reemphasizing that as long as Acuna is not six K he's probably going to end up as a one-off in my lineups just almost every day. Um, at least a portion of my lineups. You look at just look at his production without. I mean, he's he's stolen a base in the last each of the last three games. He also uh, he's homered two out of the last four. He, if he gets on, he's going almost every time. So like, I don't know. It just feels like free points that we just should always be playing guys like that. He's and as much as I love Vlad and guys like that, is it's a very different paying five point seven for Acuna just because that stolen base upside gives him such a high floor really all you know walk turns into seven fantasy points right away and then you get a hit later on and boom it's basically an rbi or something and, and you're at, you have basically the equivalent of a home run so um what's the what's the weather in minnesota it looks really awful it looks like I, i'm not sure this game plays to be honest with you um it's and severe winds blowing in um well not right. severe 12 miles an hour so so never mind um I was going to say that uh, Houston probably looks looks good here if it was uh, neutral weather or neutral whatever, but um, but uh, not really interested in fighting the Minnesota weather. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think I think that if the game plays and you don't have to worry about it, then you know if it, if it clears up a little bit, that I think or Ur- Kitty is in play um, as a pivot off of some of these other guys. Yeah. Not a huge difference to, between he and Anderson and their numbers. Um, so I, I don't have that. Pro- I don't have an issue with that, but I, nothing, nothing that stands out to me with the weather, with the wind blowing in like that. And otherwise Houston certainly would make a lot of sense against uh, Archer who I don't know, man. I, I was, I was so high on this kid and, and it's just, and he's even looked good at moments this, this year, just can't quite seem to put together an actual outing. No. no. Yeah. So, and then we get, we get to, to the game that, Again, do we want to go back to the chalky St. Louis guys who let us down yesterday? Yeah, I might. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I just might. Yeah, and they're they're. I mean, they're going to be really, really popular. Are they? They I have a five point one run total. It's ninety degrees or eighty nine degrees oh. in St. Louis. Um, you've got Spencer Watkins on the mound, which is you know we're happy to you know, always happy to see that. Um, but it's still a righty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, you'd rather have a lefty against them. That's there's no question. I mean, just look at their lineup and you go through, you have a switch uh-huh. hitter at the top, and then it's just righty, 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 right. It's just like it's a very righty dominant lineup. Um, don't be surprised if they if they change their lineup today. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect this necessarily to be the lineup they roll with. I, I do think you might see a lefty thrown in. Um, you want you want to play Nicolas at all or no? So that I'm always, you know, I, I really like Nicolas as a pitcher. The price is starting to get to that point of like, whoa, are we supposed to be doing this? Because he's not a high strikeout guy. He occasionally will have the the strikeout game, but when it seems like when he has a really good game, he's a, you know, it's like a he's got a three three hitter or something like that, and with like four strikeouts, it's just he just doesn't doesn't necessarily. I would I think I'd rather play McGill with the upside, but I, I you know, he might, by the end of the day, he might make it into some lineups for me, but I'm not like excited about it. I. I also don't want to pick on him particularly, but I wouldn't mind if you want to, if somebody wants to take like a one-off somewhere else, he's been pretty good about keeping the, uh, you know, he's always been good about keeping the home runs down. He will give up some contact because he, he used, he, he used to never walk anybody. Now this year, he's, his walk rates a little bit up, but still pretty solid. Um, yeah. I, I think that again, it's going to be about whether or not you want to play the popular St. St. Louis as your main stack, maybe playing them as a secondary stack. Maybe if you do play a full stack going the wraparound, starting with uh, like, maybe you start with uh, Carlson and, and go up to Edmund or something and maybe skip the guys who are going to be just like 30 and 40% owned. Cause I really do think that Tyler O'Neill and Yepes will be over 30, 30%. Maybe, maybe Yepes could be even as high as like 40%. And it's just, it's just not right to be playing baseball players who are 40% owned who are hitters unless you're obsessed with the stack or something and you have some some low owned options you don't have low owned options on this team they're just all going to be owned except for maybe Bader and Donovan so I think I would have to probably be 
playing both those guys on this slate to, to be interested. But I, I mean, look, they, they make sense. I'm, I, it's going to be hard. There will probably be Cardinals, you know, in, in some of my lines, but I, I think I'm just going to treat it more as a secondary stack personally. So right. Kansas City, Kate, Texas, I, I think is a bullpen game. I, I think it's both sides because I'm looking at this Brady Singer. and Yeah, he hasn't pitched more than three innings. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't pitched more than three innings. And then they, they optioned him to AAA like on the 28th of April. And now he's like back. I mean, what, what I don't know what, what's going on here, but but um, uh, I I think it's a bullpen game on both sides, and I I probably don't want any part of it. I mean, if anything, maybe I'll take a shot with with uh, with KC, um, but I'm probably going to stay away. Yeah, I um, I'm open to the to the KC thing more tonight. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a ton of ownership outside the top three, and I look. What happened to Whit Merrifield? I mean, crazy, right? This guy was our guy, and mm-hmm. and like has just been just. We we were playing we were paying fifty six hundred for him. <laughs> yeah, and then you go out there and he he hit a home run or he'd steal two bases. Like it felt like yeah. every day. Um, but I think you could I think you can get some 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 take some shots here with with the you know the stack would be something like Whit. Uh, I guess you I guess even the one through five because I don't think you're going to get a ton of ownership on Dozier and O'Hearn. Um, but I would like to get Witt in there at, at low ownership and you get Melendez as the catcher. Who's a, who's a top prospect um, at, you know, probably batting sixth or seventh. So I, 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 I kind of am interested a little bit in the, in the KC side of this and I don't have a problem of, of any of the Rangers. And I will say that Corey Seager is probably the best play on the slate, but is also going to be owned like it. So if you're going to play the, the Rangers, he only, he only had two home runs last night. I know you only had two. Um, he's going to start heating up. It's you know it's that. When it, you I, let me you let me know when he starts heating up. I, I, hey, there it is. I, <laughs> I, I did it one day too late apparently, um, but yeah, he got off to a little bit. You know, it hasn't been quite himself all season, but uh, I, I think still by by the end of the year, you're going to see thirty plus home runs. With he might hit another two tonight if they if they let Brady Singer face him twice. <laughs> yeah. Remember that with Brady Singer though? He we had the whole picking on Brady Singer experience and he would like go out and have like a no hitter through six every time it felt like and then he made, he won me all the money in, in something last year. That's right. Showdown, you, showdown slate. That's right. He did. That's right. That's right. I, I forgot about that. Um all right. Well, I so basically for me, the way I've got it looked at is priority. I really do like the Mets. Um I, you know, it's, 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 it's the name of the game is going back to the, the things that failed me a little bit last night, although Atlanta actually did my guys did pretty well for Atlanta. I think Atlanta is going to be low owned enough to where I want pieces of it. I just feel like I keep seeing pieces and I don't feel, I don't feel like there's one stack that I feel great about outside of the Mets. Um, and the Roy, I, I do think the Royals are, are a viable stack, uh, but it's probably going to end up being like a four, two, two kind of a night for me. And I, and I like the idea of let's just get different with it and let's stack the Rays a little bit. You know what I mean? Against Otani, you got the highest owned pitcher, you get leverage that way. And this Otani's the exact, you know, he's a, a right-handed Robbie Ray to some extent. He gives up power. He uh, can get wild at times, even though he's been very, very good this year. And I, I would take, I would take some shots against him because when he blows up, he blows up big time. So that's what I would say about that. So that, that, that that's sort of the way I'm treating this slate, but it's probably going to be, Four two two or even a three three two two a three three two um, for me tonight because I don't love these stacks outside of the Yankees. Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Sheets, you there? No, no, I'm good. Okay, all right, guys. Well, good luck, everybody, and we will see you shortly. Okay, you want to fire a golf?